Hey, howdy, hey, how's everybody doing? And welcome back to Disney Daily. I just received a very special book in the mail that I am so excited to share with you all. The book is called The Art of Raya and the Last Dragon. This book gives readers insight into the creative process of animators who make such visually stunning pieces like Raya. In today's video, I am going to focus on the behind the scenes art, scripts, and sketches that went into creating Sisu. Now, for those of you who don't know, Sisu is a water dragon based off of and inspired by the Naga. The Naga are are mythical beings of Southeast Asia that are known for being both powerful and symbols of positivity. Nagas possess the ability to manifest as both a human or a serpent, and they are very strongly associated with water. Dr. S, the visual anthropologist on the project, revealed that Sisu's design and her spiritual nature were derived from the Naga mythology specifically. The art director revealed that one of the goals when creating Sisu was to make her so inspiring, visually speaking, that someone might even be moved enough to write poetry about her. Now, like any Disney character, Sisu went through a lot of different changes and looks. At times, she was depicted as more magical, while other times she was more ferocious looking. Production designer Corey Loftus said that initially when they pictured Sisu, many of them wanted to create a high fantasy western dragon with large bat wings and scales all over her body. But that wasn't a dragon that was true to the culture. So to really get a better idea for what Sisu should look like, the team worked and consulted with specialists such as Lao Visual and anthropologists, and a Thai architect who gave them insights into the creation of this mythical being. Ultimately, the creators wanted to stay true to Southeast Asian culture depictions, so Sisu's final design was very whimsical but also respectful of regional customs. To be more specific, Sisu was given a crest and a serpent-like body which were more prominent design features of the Naga. Art director Amy Thompson went into more detail explaining that Sisu was made blue to show her ties to the water. Her body was given an S shape to illustrate her ability to glide through the water effortlessly. Additionally, to stay true to the water theme, creators gave her a water-like motif on Sisu's crest. In all honesty, this information about Sisu's creation was fascinating, and as I kept reading through the book, I began to understand more and more just how much bringing Sisu to life in animation meant to many of those who were working on the project. For example, head of story Fawn Vera Sunthorn grew up in Thailand, and she remembers just how significant the Naga were to her everyday life. She said they were integrated into all kinds of architecture and that they would stand guard outside of temples. You can see this similar integration of dragons like Sisu throughout the lands of Kumundra. Now one of the last things I want to emphasize in regards to the making of Sisu was just how challenging bringing her to life on screen was. Carlos Cabral, head of characters and technical animation, said that creating Sisu in CG was a technical challenge for everyone because she was so complex. He goes on to say that she really pushed the limits in regards to their understanding of animation. Now, in regards to Sisu as a human, that was a whole different challenge the movie team had to endure. The main focus with Sisu as a human was to make her look as uncomfortable as possible. John Rippa, the co-director, said they illustrated this by dressing Sisu in oversized clothing. This approach really gave audiences the impression that Sisu was very out of place and she felt that way. Creators also wanted to ensure that audiences could see a little bit of Sisu the dragon, even as a human. So they kept her hair wild and bright and they also added details into her coat to represent the dragon. For example, the frays on the bottom of the coat are supposed to be reminiscent of her fins. Additionally, she was given a long sash that would be reminiscent of her tail. Well, that concludes this episode of Disney Daily. I hope you all learned something new. If you really enjoy these behind the animation videos, please let me know down in the comments. And my question for you all today is what scene in Raya and the Last Dragon is your favorite? As always, thanks for being my guest here at Disney Daily. Until next time.